Hello and welcome back. Let's play Jane's Fighters Anthology as we continue with the reference materials. Today we'll be going over the MiG-23, I do believe. Oh, there we go. MiG-23 Flogger B. Title, McCoy and MiG-23 Flogger B. NATO reporting names, Flogger A. Actually... Okay, I was just a little paranoid that I might have forgotten um, to do videos next time. But I don't think the Soviet aircraft or the Russian aircraft really get videos. Yeah, there's nothing until the Raphael C, the Saab. Yeah, only the Su-35. That's, uh... That is surprising. Anyways, let's go back to the MiG-23 here. McCoy MiG-23 Flogger B. NATO reporting names Flogger A, B, C, E, F, G, H, and K. Type single seat variable geometry air combat fighter and two seat operational trainer. Excuse me. Program development began 1964. 23 and 11 one prototype first flew 10th of June 1967 and was displayed during Aviation Day fly past Domo. Dovo Airport, Moscow, 9th of July, 1967. Pre-series aircraft delivered to Soviet Air Forces, 1970. Initial series production interceptors delivered, 1973. With MiG-27, superseded MiG-21 as primary equipment Soviet Tactical Air Forces in Aviatsia PVV, PVO Home Defense. Interceptor Force, production in USSR, Ended mid 1980s, but continues in India. Replacement of early variants with MiG 29s and SU 27s continue. Design features shoulder wing variable geometry configuration, sweep variable manually in flight or on ground to 16 degrees, 45 degrees, or 72 degrees. Values given in manuals and on pilot's panel. True values 18 degrees, 40 minutes. 47 degrees 40 minutes and 74 degrees 40 minutes respectively. Two hydraulic wing sweep motors driven separately by main and control booster systems. Landing gear hydraulically retractable tricycle type, single wheel on each main unit and steerable twin wheel nose unit. Power plant one Soyuz or Katatorov I Tachaturov R-35-300 turbojet rated at up to 127.5 kN or 28,660 pounds force with max afterburning. Water injection system capacity 28 liters or 7.4 US gallons or 6.15 Imperial gallons. Three field tanks and fuselage aft of cockpit and six in wings. Internal field capacity 4,250 liters or 1,122 U.S. gallons, or 935 imperial gallons. Variable geometry air intakes and variable nozzle. Combination pilot only on KM-1 or KM-1M zero height, 70 to 675 knot, or 130 to 1,250 km per hour, or 80 to 775 mile per hour ejection seat, in air conditioned and pressurized cockpit under a small hydraulically actuated rearward hinged canopy, bulletproof windscreen. Avionics modernized SAU 23AM automatic flight control system coupled to Polyot short range navigation and flight system, Sapphire 23ML J band multi mode radar, NATO designation Hylark 2. Search range 38 nautical miles or 70 kilometers or 43 miles. Tracking range 29 nautical miles or 55 kilometers or 34 miles. Behind dielectric nose comb, no radar scope. Instead, picture is projected onto heads up display. RSBN 6S short range radio nav system. Armament consists of one 23 millimeter GSL, sorry, GSH 23L twin barrel gun in fuselage belly pack. Large flash illuminator around muzzles, 200 rounds. Two pylons in tandem under center fuselage, one under each engine air intake duct, and one under each fixed inboard wing panel. For radar guided R23R or K23R or NATO designation AA7 Apex infrared missiles, 
or R23T or K23T or NATO designation AA7 Apex and or infrared R60T or NATO designation AA8 AFID air to air missiles. Uh, what is that? B8 packs of. <coughs> oh, excuse me. B8 packs of 20 80 millimeter S8 air to surface rockets. UB 3257 packs of 3257 millimeter S5 rockets. S24 240 millimeter rockets, bombs, container weapons, UPK 23 250 pods containing a GSH 23L gun, various sensor and equipment pods, or other external stores. Use of twin launchers under air intake ducts permits carriage of four R60 missiles plus two R23 on underwing pylons. Dimensions external. Wingspan fully spread 13.965 meters or 45 feet 10 inches. Fully swept 7.779 meters or 25 feet and six and a quarter inches. Length overall, including nose probe, 16.71 meters or 54 feet 10 inches. Height overall, 4.82 meters or 15 feet 9 and three quarter inches. Areas, wings, gross, spread 37.35 meters squared or four and two square feet. Swept 34.16 meters squared or 367.7 square feet. Weights and loadings, weight empty, 10,200 kilograms or 22,485 pounds. Max external weapon load, 3,000 kilograms or 6,615 pounds. Takeoff weight, 14,700 to 17,800 kilograms or 32,405 pounds to 39,250 pounds. Performance, max level speed at height, 72 degrees sweep, max Mach 2.35 or 1,350 knots or 2,500 kilometers per hour or 1,553 miles per hour. Landing speed 140 to 151 knots or 260 to 280 kilometers per hour or 162 to 174 miles per hour. Max rate of climb at sea level 14,400 meters per minute or 47,250 feet per minute. Service ceiling, 18,500 meters or 60,700 feet. G limit below Mach 0.85 plus 0.85 or plus 8.5. Above Mach 0.85, it is plus 7.5. Length, 16.71 meters. Height, 4.82 meters. Wingspan, 13.96 meters. Max takeoff weight, 17,800 kilograms. Max wing load, 476.6 kilograms per meter squared. Max level speed in nuts, 6,728. Max range, 1,520 nautical miles, 500 meter takeoff run, 750 meter landing run. Max rate of climb, 14,400 meters per minute. Service ceiling, 18,500 meters. And here we can see the um, 3D view. This looks kind of like a Libyan flogger to me. And we can see that the wings are in their spread position rather than in their swept back position. I actually honestly do not know. I think the game models the uh, sweep wing on the uh, Big 23, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Because, uh, yeah, on the Mig 27, they're in... Well, on the Mig 27, I think they're locked in their swept back position, so that's why. But on the... Uh, just to like simplify maintenance and stuff. But on the MiG-23, it is variable sweep, much like the F-14 Tomcat's wings or the B-1 Lancer's wings. And unfortunately, we don't get to see this guy much. It should have been like the main opponent for the F-4, but unfortunately the F-4 ended up facing off more against the MiG-21 and the uh, MiG-17, so this guy, it's seen plenty of action, but nothing too famous, um, at least to the average person, so, and I think in-game it's a bit under, uh, undervalued too, <laughs> but that's a different issue, and I think that will conclude our episode for today, so with that, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for next time, and stay safe out there, and we'll see you then.